Space. You see, in movies, living in a spaceship is like living in a really nice apartment with all crumpets and tea and housemates. But it's not. Space is a new, new world and it presents challenges we've never encountered before. So in this video, I'll be going over a few problems we need to face before we can travel in space. And that includes five points that I want to cover. Gravity, confinement, sleep, germs, and radiation. All right, so first let's start talking about gravity. You see, traveling in a zero gravity to a new planet with its own gravitational field actually affects our hand-eye coordination. We naturally develop an intuition of how to interact with things under one gravity field. But once we leave that and go somewhere else, we actually lose that intuition. So without gravity, our bones lose minerals like calcium. But those mineral structures in the bone change depending on how much the load the bones are exposed to. You see, bones are always adapting to the amount of stress exerted on it to maintain constant strain energy per bone. So with a weaker gravitational field, there's less stress in the bone and the bone drains its calcium to become weaker to keep the strain energy the same. So actually, just like muscles, if we don't use our bones, meaning if we don't apply loads onto the bones, they're actually gonna lose their minerals and weaken. With lower amounts of minerals in the same bone volume, we're actually losing bone density by about 1% a month. And that's actually as much as an elderly person loses. Therefore, if we ever do travel and come back to Earth, it's not a guarantee our bones will be back to normal. And because it doesn't take any effort to float in space, our hearts actually become weaker as well. So without gravity, less blood is being pushed down to the lower limbs, leaving more blood to be pulled up towards our heads, causing more pressure around the eyes that could lead to its own problems. That's actually why astronauts will need to do a lot of testing to make sure they're healthy. They'll need to exercise to keep their bones dense and wear compression cuffs on their thighs that will squeeze it and keep the blood where it belongs. So if you guys hate to travel now, imagine traveling where you have to do your exercises. But if you hate exercising, don't worry, there's a drug. And it's called a bisphosphonate drug and it actually helps prevent bone loss in space. So although we talked about a few negative effects on the human body caused by gravity, a lot of it is still not known. And that's why it's important that NASA does its research by relying on things like urine examinations to find out more about how low gravity in space in general affects health. And you know, things are being discovered like whether the Epstein-Barr virus is to be reactivated. So the Epstein-Barr virus is actually a type of herpes. And the weird thing about herpes is you'll always have it, but it may not show symptoms and hence it's called deactivated. But it can flare up when your body goes through stress or when your immune system is down and outer space can definitely cause those things. They're also examining blood tests to see how well the immune system is doing up there. So now the second thing we may need to worry about is being stuck in one confined area for too long. Look, I hate most people if I spend more than 20 minutes with them, so I can't even imagine how much it sucks to be with Brad from gym class and freaking Bertha from band camp. On a more serious note though, spending most of your life in a space with people you may not entirely know, or that even that you do know, has some serious psychological impacts. Without any sense of privacy or space, hostilities can definitely form between even the friendliest of people. But don't fear, cause NASA is here. So NASA is actually making sure that everyone that goes on long space missions is trained to get along. That's still definitely a huge problem that private industries will have to take a look at if they're planning on longer space tourisms. And guys, if you haven't noticed already, uh, NASA will be brought up a lot because they do most of the research on space impacts of humans in space because uh, NASA is awesome. NASA's life. <sighs> so the third thing we have to worry about is sleep. Our bodies use sunlight and even temperatures to regulate a roughly 24-hour cycle of physiological processes, including when we sleep and when we wake up. That is called circadian rhythm, and everyone's a little different, and you may have noticed this already if you wake up around the same time before or even without an alarm. And astronauts in a spacecraft don't know when daytime or nighttime is. And so without knowing that, their circadian rhythms are going all out of whack. 
all out of whack. And so astronauts are currently using actigraphy that helps them access and improve sleep and alertness by recording how much they move and how much ambient light is around. You know, it's all like sleeping apps on the market right now, which helps me get my beauty sleep. Oh, and by the way, um, we actually do use LED lighting right now, and it's being used in space stations to help align circadian rhythms, which will improve sleep, alertness, and performance. So number four is germs. The ecosystem inside the spacecraft actually does play a huge role in everyday astronaut life. So microbes adapt to the new space environment by changing its characteristics, and microbes do transfer actually much more easily from person to person in space because they don't have gravity weighing them down. And so besides the new mutated germs, the stress hormone levels are naturally elevated in your body and the immune system is under duress due to the new environment, making the body much more susceptible to these new pathogens. Welcome to the new world. It's a, it's, it's a great, great time. Awesome. Great. Not dangerous at all. So to combat these problems, NASA is using technology to actually monitor the air quality of the space station to just, just to make sure that the atmosphere is safe to breathe and not contaminated with dangerous gases like ammonia or carbon monoxide. But that's definitely something that we'll have to take a look at for long-term space travel, like how to not get sick by germs because germs mutate and they are everywhere. All right, so space radiation is the fifth danger we have to worry about, and it's probably the most dangerous. Here on Earth, our atmosphere filters out these kinds of radiation, but we won't have an atmosphere in space. On the space station, astronauts receive over 10 times the radiation that we naturally experience here on Earth, making space an extremely dangerous environment. And so this extra radiation would most uh, la, la, la. And so this extra radiation would most definitely increase our risk of cancer. It can also damage the nervous system, causing decline in cognitive function. And we can also develop degenerative tissue diseases like cataracts, cardiac, and circulatory diseases. And to make matters worse, the food we eat and the medicines we take in space must also be safe and retain their nutrient and pharmaceutical value even though they're being bombarded by all this radiation. So right now what NASA is doing is actually figuring out ways to measure how radiation affects us while living in space and how to identify these biological countermeasures. All right, so the last problem we have is planning. You know, in any big voyage, once we depart, the supplies we have on board are the only supplies that are available to us. What happens if somebody gets sick and needs surgery or if the food goes rancid. These are all things that scientists are already looking into. And so scientists have to come up with ideas like developing an IV solution from space station water and a dash of salt crystals. So as you can see, there's still a lot of problems we have to solve before we can finally become full-fledged space tourists. Because space is really dangerous. So for all the fellows out there, next time this girl tells you that she needs more space, Please just link her to this video to show her why it's currently such a bad idea. So as always guys, have a good one.